Hello everybody, welcome back to Motion RC Live this Wednesday, April 1st, and I didn't have a good April Fool's joke for you all. Um, nothing really to joke about <laughs> out there. I wanted to do something fun if we had a chance to go out to the field, maybe would have filmed a fake plane or something. Had a lot of ideas for it, uh, but then uh, all of this happened. So, um, you know, it's April 1st, it's just another day, and hopefully it's another day closer to when we can get back to normalcy out there in the world but i'm excited because uh you know last two days we did the hawk live unboxing and build yesterday we did the tiger cat got her hanging up in the back there finish it off last night and uh now we've got the free wing 64 millimeter a10 thunderbolt 2 this is the high performance version and the only version i think uh we sell anymore so hopefully when alpha joins us uh at some point because he's in a different time uh zone out there you guys will get a uh you know he could answer any uh, minutia about the differences but right now I think the 4s version of this is the only version we're probably going to carry going forward I think it might be the only one needed but I'm excited because a I've never this is one of the few uh, free wing planes now that I never got a chance to unbox assemble or fly I've seen um, Enix Steve Hodges' son I believe had this one uh, at Joe Nall a few times and I seen him fly it around I have the big one back there that I love flying around but um it's always nice to fly 64 millimeter jets. I like a 4S powered one because most of our park jets are 3S birds. So excited about that. Recommending here is 3300 milliamp uh, battery. So I don't have a 33, but we'll see if we can fit. Obviously a 3000 should fit. We'll see if we can fit the 3600 inside because that's a fatter, more brick pack. And we could see if we squeeze a 4000 in there. You know, with the high performance motor, I don't think we might we shouldn't have a problem weight wise it's not too different than the 3000 but either way the goal of this video unbox it put it together set it up and i'm gonna set it up uh for this one just on your basic admiral six channel receiver so <clears throat> Jameson, yes, we'll find out about Joan Isle tomorrow morning. I want to welcome everybody here. Got the usual hundred suspects in the chat. And if you're new to this, again, we're going to do this at least for this week every day. Um, every Friday, we're going live at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, anyway, so this Friday, no different. We'll have our regular episode 13. And then I'm still deciding. Part of me wants to just continue this on until we get out of... Uh, this mess so I may do it next week it's just a matter of content 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 um, I'd have to get maybe some more unboxings or my thought is maybe tomorrow we uh, we bust out the airbrush and airbrush weather this bad boy up um, you could watch me either fail miserably or succeed based on what Wesley Miller of the Merry Merry Boozers taught me then so let's get started let's see if the top-down camera is gonna work a little better today so I like taking off the uh, the top of the box. So here we go. Get a little wider view today on it, but it's always nice just to see how it comes out of the box. So let's get started. Yeah, Gary, I'll definitely start needing a bigger room. I got a lot of space here. You'd be amazed. My uh, ceiling looks like a jigsaw puzzle. I hang them from bungees, from the open beams, all throughout the uh, the studio here, and they none of them touch but they look like they do like i i spend a ton of time to uh to make them work well so here we go got the tape cut off and let's see how this one comes out of the box beautiful right off the bat the one thing i'm liking is obviously the one piece wing so this is an 1100 millimeter wingspan for those who don't know so it's like your um you know like your like a lot of warbirds are in that in that range um you know larger than most of the 64 millimeter 3s birds we we carry but uh it is one thing i like about this too it is 16th scale so it's going to be so when i set it up i'm going to put the abrams next to it because it uh it matches our tank so if you're just a tank guy and you wanted something to park on the on the field on the battlefield uh you can park an a10 over there and just have your fun so it looks like we got our these are our vertical stabilizers coming in a plastic bag so again i like to take everything out you know what i'll do i'll take it out of the bag in a second let's get it out of the foam first anything else i can pull out of here yep 
We got our hardware bag over here. And this is gonna have, again, more glue and a lot of plastic bits, some um, verticals, antenna, a lot of cables, two control horns and screws. We'll get into that baggie as we go. And then it looks like all of our ordnance we can pull out here. So here we go. Some of these bad boys with the red painted tips and it looks like they're gonna be glue-ons. So once you put them on, they're on. We got these. So what is that? That's six pieces so far. And I know there's a center line tank in here too, which is cool. But that's that. Let's pull it out. And let's see, because actually, she's looking darker than what the picture, because the pictures on the website have been there for a while. So if this plane does look different, then it makes my job. I have to go out and update the pictures on it, because maybe they have a different paint job on it at this point. You know, it's tough sometimes to, uh, to see what they do with them. Oh, let me cut that, missing that piece. There we go. I think I got everything else out of there. So here we go, one piece wing coming out. Boom, now it looks about the same. Maybe the pictures were just, you know, taken on a brighter day than we are in here. But you do have a little differences in the gray around, but it's more basic. But you got at least all the no steps are on there. I know doing that for the big one is no fun, <laughs> putting, putting the stickers on. So, uh, you get the stickers included. Oh, more ordnance coming in the pack. Yeah, I'm thinking we should have eight on each, you know, four on each, underneath each wing based on the pictures. There we go. And then we got, I'll stuff that in there. Ah, then we got our two piece. So we got our fuselage, we got our center line tank, we have our horizontal stabilizer and some little bits. So this is a, a full little 64 millimeter kit. I'm excited about this. It's always fun to whip a 64 around, especially a 4S1. It's gonna be quick, it's gonna be easier to fit in the car. It's always fun to burt all over the place. Now this is a little foam extra bit. We'll figure out where that goes later. We got our center line tank. That's pretty diesel. That's a good size. Easily over a foot long on that. Here's our nozzles and 12 bladed fan. If you could see inside, let me pick that up. It is a 12 bladed fan in there. And I believe it's a 3300 KV motor. I'll look on the box in a second um, for the upgrade, but should sound nice and whooshy with a four blade. I think the original had, like most 64s, had the five bladed fan when they first came out and they just sound like hair dryers. But getting the 12 blade on there should be nice. And last but not least is our fuselage or our front fuselage without the nozzles on there. And let's see. And I wish April Fools, I would say it was a working machine gun on the front. So we get some real burnt sounds. But again, all decaled up, a lot of nice panel lines on it. Looks really good. This would be a fun one. Maybe tomorrow my thought is, let's just weather this one up because this would be fun. I don't mind making a mistake on an A10 because you could always just paint it again. But again, there are really no mistakes when you do weather. Let's open the canopy. Now we'll see what we can fit in there. Should be no problem getting a 3600 inside or a, uh, or a 4,000, it'll just be a matter of the weight, but with the beefier system, I would definitely believe we should be able to get off of, uh, to be able to get off. As far as grass runway, again, I'm not sure. We'll see, but being that it's a 64 millimeter, I'm wondering if you can't just hand launch it if you wanted to, you know, why not just, if you could throw all your other ones, let's do that. So let me, I think we're out of everything out of the foam. So I'll go back to our main camera. There we go. You want the biggest battery you can get in it, Jeremy Salt says. That sounds like a good idea. Is this one that uh, Jeremy, your son, cut his teeth on? Because he flies the big one now. His son's now nine years old. He's gotta be nine already by now. But, 
I just check and make sure I'm not missing anything and get out of my way. So let's lay it on the table. We got a fuselage. And again, since I never built this before, I have no clue what order or steps they're going to want to build this in. Obviously, ordnance is going to be some of the last stuff we do. So we'll get that out of the way. Let me get my verticals out. They're pretty similar, if you will, to the bigger one, except the bigger ones screw in. But they look nice. I dig the, uh, and you can see it more up close. Hold that there for a second. This is a free wing bird, Brad. This is the 64 millimeter A10. Free wing A10, high performance version. They had a 64 millimeter A10. I don't know when this came out. This was definitely older than my time, but they updated it. And I saw somebody commented that they want to know, they wanted a, uh, he swapped the pilot on this with a GI Joe. That's funny. Want to know that where the coffee mug comes from? That's on the website as well. I had that when the initial release was back forever ago, and it was a great plane and a scheme from Osin Air Force Base, which I did some time at. Cool. Yeah, Jeremy works at the Air Force. When we released the F-35, he couldn't have been happier because he used to always share shots of the F-35s flying around his work, which is cool as heck. And then, you know, uh, Patrick Crowisdale works at um, Dobbins Air Force Base around the block here. And actually, he invited me and Alex uh, a couple weeks back now. We got a chance to go over there. I had to, I had to swap a plane with him for something. And he's like, come on in. So we got to walk around his uh, C-130 and see the place. There's a museum over there. It's really, really cool. Wingspan, Michael Lane, is 1,100 millimeters, which... You know, I do a calculation as far as what that is in in inches. I can't do it off the top of my head. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. 40 something, maybe? Maybe 30 inches. Just pulling out all little bits so it looks like some plastic bits where we're gonna put, screw that in. Some vertical fences, antennae. We got control horns. So there's definitely some work because again it's an older kit so you know once you make the molds it gets harder to update certain things with them the glue i will save because i'm still working on the same glue from the last two planes i'm not opening a new one yet keep saving them saving saving the glue control horns out there a lot of little bits one thing about a10s there is a lot of little bits you know, that guy We got our screws and some extra clevises. So just two control horns, so I'm assuming control rods that... Oh, yeah, all right. The ailerons are already separate. Ah, okay. So you can... The option for flaps. So maybe we could do the flaps today. You have to cut them in if you want to do flaps. But uh, they do give you the pockets, so it does not come with flaps uh, included. So you can see that there. But the aileron uh, servos already installed, and you've got... And you've got the linkages already, uh, you know, attached. But again, like everything, when you set it up, you've got to, uh, you know, you will have to uh, check them, make sure they're okay. Don't always just rely on the factory. And so that's basically it. That's the whole breadth of the kit laid out before you. So now let me go into, let me go in. How long you've been flying? Is George talking to me? Are you talking to me? How long have I been flying? Well, I started in the hobby about eight years ago. I've probably been flying for six and probably really flying for about three, four. You know, I started and I started with drones, started with stuff. Oh, he's talking to somebody else. But you know, I've been around it a long time now. So let's see. Elevator, installing the tail wing. Installing the tail wing is how they is how they say it first. So firstly, we remove the fuselage tail wing, glue and screws from package and prepare to install. Okay, so they want us to install the tail wing. 
I guess we'll call it that if they want. So we're using foam tack. I'm gonna use my razor blade because whenever I'm connecting foam to foam, you wanna score it up. That's what I always do. So we wanna just make sure we're gonna do this in the right orientation. Yes, so that's the bottom. This is the top. And then this is gonna be probably the back of where that attaches to. I wanna make sure this way. Probably gonna go right like that maybe. We'll see when we get there. But for right now, we're doing the sides. So the verticals to the horizontals. So a lot of gluing. So servos already come pre-installed on on our verticals with the again the control rod already there so the linkages they give you are just extra for your flaps if you're going to put flaps on it looks like looks like everything else let me see elevator control horns are already there so these two control horns the two linkages are going to be if you want to install flaps because then our elevator servos are already installed on the back of the fuselage good so we don't even have to do any of that so mostly it's just a glue together job here and now let's make sure, how do we run that? All right, they're giving us, I'm gonna show you this. They're giving you a trough. That's where you're gonna run your servo wire as you put this, uh, as you put this on. So I wanna make sure I do it on the right side again. No steps are going on top. And they're already partly glued in to where they should go, which is nice. I just wanna, I want to do a dry fit first to make sure how it's going to act when I go to when I do the real thing. But the beauty of this, the glue that comes with, you know, these free wing aircrafts, you have time. It's not the type of glue that the second you put it in, you know, you're going to, you're not going to be able to pry it apart quick. And you want to pry it apart because you got to give it a little bit of time. But there you go. That fits nice and flush. You'll hide the, uh, there. So I say... Let's start with our scoring. Actually, I'm gonna leave it because I put the I put the wire in. I just push it in, and it's giving me nice, you know, it's staying there nice and put. So I'm just gonna score the foam on both sides. That'll just give me more surface area for the glue to adhere to. And then can I do it with one finger? No. Nope. See if we're gonna. I might be able to get away with the same same bit of glue. But I think, you know, at the price this is, if you're somebody who, you know, an A-10 is a definitely a cool plane to have in your hangar. Everybody loves the A-10, I think. Probably one of the more favorite of all the aircraft, at least based on last year's March Madness tournament that I did when I just threw up 64 random aircraft. Uh, the A-10 ended up beating out the SR-71 as the most favorite from everybody all right so pressing that together then I'm gonna pull it apart and now you want to just wait a little bit yeah I mean a tens are awesome I actually uh, got to see them live at uh... oh Jameson noticed the updated logo Alex I didn't think you'd think anyone would notice but um what's it called I went at North Georgia has a has an air show it got canceled this year not because of corona but for something else but um i'd been there maybe two years like the first month i was down here in georgia i took my two youngest kids with me because i had to go see it and uh i got to see two a10s perform there and man it was awesome and the guy was just saying that like when two a10s are working together they could turn within like i think it was like 1500 yard radiuses and you know, they could lay down, the, the way he said it, like they can lay down, two A-10s could be laying down enemy fire on the same on the same area once every like 10 seconds, if they just, when they work in tandem. And it was just so cool to see a plane that's that large, but to be that, able to fly that slow and make, you know, to make such, like it turns on a dime. I mean, it could take off and land in no time. That's why this one, you know, I with an A-10, like my big one, I don't care how fast it goes, it's more that presentation. It presents so well. You know why? This was a leap forward at the time. Well, what I'm noticing here too, yeah, I mean, they're nylon hinges. It's not all foam hinges. They do have, or if they're not nylon, it's plastic, but they're actual hinging in here. So it's not like they're relying. I don't know if that's something they updated since the first one. Uh, I never saw this when it originally came out. So I can't speak to how it used to be. 
But uh, when Alpha gets in here, probably a little later, knowing him, he'll jump in. He does not have the time in the day to be on all these extra live shows, but he'll be joining us usually every Friday and then pops in for these. But uh, he could give us more history lesson on this particular aircraft. But still a good one. If the three wing's still producing it, that means people are still buying it, still like it. And I know a newer one just came out that's on 6S. That looks cool. But now there's just more options. I mean, there's a there's an A10 in virtually every size at this point in foam that you would want. So, uh, you know, it's one of those aircraft that, yep, everybody wants one. So now I'm going to do the glue on the other side. And then this might be, we're going to be waiting around a little bit today for glue to dry, kind of like we did yesterday with the Tiger Cat. Now I'm going to press this in. Now this is going to be a little tougher to do. Let me move that up. Now you don't want to knock the other side out while you're doing this side. So I'm going to bring this wire forward, dig it into the trough, get it in there, get it started at least. There we go. Now we're started and then press. Perfect. Now I'm just going to, this side's doing a little better, so now I'm going to pry it apart. Letting some air into the mixture, so I'm just holding it a little away from each other. And I'll wait till I see 12.22, because my clock on my laptop says 12.21. Will you get to do a flight demo on the A10, James, and any new releases coming up? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to fly everything I built. I'll, you know, if you want to see me do it, sometimes I have Patrick do it. However it can, it's just a matter of right now getting out to the field. Our main field is closed. So um, today we were going to go out. We've, we found a new field that is, is not part of a state park. So they are open. Um, it's more private land, I think. Uh, it's about an hour drive north. We're going to go, me and Alex are going to head there tomorrow morning um, to film. So maybe I'll throw this in the car. Uh, it's just a matter of the time. It's an hour drive there and back. We do have some stuff we got to get done. That's all I'll say there. And, uh, you know, but either way, once once it opens up, everything I got to fly. I know a lot of people want to see the A6 high performance. I, I want to see the A6 high performance. I got to fly it once when Alex wasn't with me. Um, and it flew awesome. I just need him to film it. This, I definitely, I've been dying to fly this one. I love something small and that you could just toss around, toss in the back of the car. And this one, I want to bring the Abrams out and just, you know, do a Burt pass over the top of it. So, um, you don't check for squareness. I mean, it's it fits one way. Danny, I mean, what am I going to do? I, I, I rely, I know the guy who designs these, and I know the machining that they do. If it fits, it, it you know, just send it. <laughs> I'm sure it's, you know, it looks pretty darn good to me. You know, I, I could sit there, but right now I'm just holding it tight because of just the awkwardness of this piece. I want to make sure the glue dries as much as possible before I set it off to the side. I don't really have, you know, I guess I could lay a battery or something on the top of it, but I'm just going to hold this for a little bit. The A6 is a killer jet in real life and has always been on my list. Yeah, the jet, the A6, the intruder is great. Yeah, this model has retracts. This one, it's a solid bird. Different. That's why it's a different price range. It's the only, you know, it's not like a, I wouldn't call it a park jet, like, because it's a twin 64. It's almost how, like, the ME262, our twin 70, it's not, you know, it flies, it's as big as an 80 or a 90, you know, it just happens to have twin 70 motors you know yeah right spinny just glue it and send it man this thing is what we want so now let's just see all right that's going that's okay you know the best thing about foam tack you could pry it apart if you had to but now you got me all nervous about square i wasn't even thinking about it being square or not i was just rolling with it you know what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna take two four thousands two heavy packs and just smash them up against each other there there we go so now don't hit it let that do its thing and let's move on to 
what is the next step? Oh, so they want you to mount that to the fuselage. Next, is there something I can do though before? If install rudder servo, we should loosen the rudder servo wire. After we install the tail wing. So it's really all the tail and the nozzles. And once that's going, I mean, I, I don't know if I could attach the main wing before I get to the back part, but we might be able to. But you can tell how the manuals, you know, nowadays are a lot nicer than the ones back then. Looks like there's a lot of guesswork here. See, this would be the type when I'm filming a video like this, me and Alex would be doing it, and then I'd say, no, we're gonna show that part first because you should have did this first before that part. You know, that's why if you if you ever need extra help, watch our build videos. We try our best to, you know, cut through the tape. But this this play might even be prior to Motion's time. Motion RC consider doing a twin 90 millimeter twin 90 millimeter A10. We already did. The free wing A10 has the option for 90 millimeter fans you, you just got to update it you know it would probably be too much to to just make another one um you know thing to make another you know a10 out there just another option you can only have so many of the same thing before they cut into each other you know how many a10s could a sing single person want to buy you could have a small one you could have a big one all different sizes but they all fly well from what I've seen. All right, so they want to do, so I'm just going to do it this way. There's no way I'm going to be able to attach anything yet until we get there. So this should dry rather fast. And if not, we're just going to send it anyway. So let me get my tray. We're going to attach this. And I'm going to go with a smaller tray. Don't, don't kill me. But I painted one up because the Robart one's just a little too high for me. So I painted this one blue. <laughs> the UMX A10, that thing was cute. I never flew it, but the UMX ones always look cute. All right, so how are we installing this? So now, again, the pictures are so upside down, upside down and inside out. All right, they give you the two, so I'll show you that while we're here if you're going to be doing this if you're going to use this as yours they've just taped in the two servo leads are taped to the end and that's what you're going to be plugging in the wiring that you're routing for your rudders here what's the price on this scott this one i believe is 255 uh the high performance version of this a10 and this runs on a single 4s battery retracts the only thing it doesn't have standard is flaps um, but you can cut them in they have a servo pocket available so if you wanted to add flaps to it you could and who knows maybe they'll end up updating that at some point but I don't know it was just one of the ones I was looking on the website for a long time and said, I never flew that one and I was dying to fly it pictures look like they could have needed some updating it's been a while since I've seen any videos on our website of it and that's part, you know, that's part of the job is it doesn't always have to, you know, I'm not just sitting here waiting for new stuff. You want to fill the website up with pictures and new stuff, everything, because what's old to somebody else it could be new to somebody else, you know. Not everybody in the hobby is always chasing whatever's next. Sometimes, you know, there are tons of great aircraft out there that came out a few years ago that you might have never flown that you might be time to go around and check it out. At this point, with the amount of <laughs> foam electric aircraft that are produced, there is something new. Somebody can fly something new almost every day for an entire year if they had them, the money to do it. So I'm just, I'm just uh, finishing off the uh, the wiring here. You're just digging it. There's already a not digging. I'm just pressing it into the trough in the foam. Just threading it through making sure it's not twisted so it goes in nice and clean and then I guess you could probably put a little foam tack on that if you want to seems to be pressed in there pretty tight as is and since it's underneath it's in a spot you're never gonna see you could probably throw a little uh, little hinge tape on it you know invisible tape be great let me just make sure 
They're looking good. All right, so now we are going to connect, pull off, I'm gonna peel back this tape. There we go, put that down there and just check your polarity, yellow to yellow or orange to orange. Oh uh, yeah, it's orange to orange, I'm colorblind. I say yellow to yellow. Positive to positive, be better. All right, that's in there. Now this looks like it's gonna get some screws. So I'm gonna pull this through and then we'll figure out how we're gonna route that uh, later. There we go. That fits nicely. They don't. The, the manual does not call for any any glue there, so I'm not going to bother putting any glue there. I do it. I set it up as stock as stock personable. Jones one one point three. Yeah, man, I love. I see some T cat saying I like the venom. I love the venom. Lately, it's been my my go to, and I take a mini van to the field. I could fit the venom with a bungee cord between bungee cord around the headrest with the two booms sticking up nose down and nothing it clears perfectly in your standard town and country minivan <clears throat> every screw in this pack uh is exactly the same from what i'm seeing unless i'm missing a baggie but it looks like they're all the same screws so that makes it a lot easier on assembly they're giving us eight screws total so you have no choice on which screws. So you can't you can't screw it up if you got the same screws for everything. So let's start driving in. There we go. Did it in, did it in, did it in. Just tight enough, but not too tight. Oh, that one isn't, didn't catch for me. There we go. The other one drove it closer. All right, perfect. So now while I'm in here, looks like we're gonna, you're gonna loosen up. So it's one servo, one elevator servo with two control rods going through. So I would obviously want to loosen that. Hmm. I guess I could plug it in before I plug in the wings. How would you guys do that? You know, obviously I want to manually, I guess I'll just attach them and then tighten it and then, or get it close. It's just, if the servo goes the wrong way, you know, I hate attaching my control rods prior to binding up and making sure the things are centered, but I think I'm gonna have to do it here or give myself enough room and then I can always manually spin it because I have a lot of thread there. So I think I'm just gonna do this and then we'll see. Worst case, I take the wing off and get back to it. If I can, is this a glue-on wing? Because this is a glue-on wing. Then we're gonna be guessing later. And again, just a different type of model. I'm digging the size of it. It's so cute in that sense. So next one is probably gonna be, I'm thinking my top. So I tighten them down. Hey, what up Rich, back again. Yeah, servo tester, I could do that, I guess. You know, I guess I might as well, you're right. Let's servo test it. Where is my elevator servo wire because normally I just like to do it all at once you know once you bind up you pretty much can see right off the bat then make any changes but it looks like I'm not going to get access 
to that elevator servo uh, after that. So let's just make sure. So we'll finish this, finish off the elevator first. So, so then I'm going to loosen it up. Loosen the servo for now. It goes back. Where is my elevator wire? There we go. No test. Let's plug it in. Stinks not being able to go out and fly. I see just a beautiful day, even though it's windy today. But it still is pretty beautiful. And digital line, normal. There we go. Yep, she was centered. So now, are they calling for any any weird mixes on the tail or anything? Should I have like any inches? I doubt it back then. I'm probably just gonna set it up straight and roll with it. And again, sorry if everybody's you know commenting at me. We're doing 133 in here, guys. If you're just joining, welcome. This is just a hangout, talk to the RC community. I'm building a 64 millimeter A10 Thunderbolt from Freewing. This is a 4S powered, 1100 milliamp wind, um, 1100 millimeter wingspan bird. Um, and we're just having some fun. I'm gonna build it, uh, I unbox it. Now we're gonna build it. Then we're gonna set it up and uh, then we're gonna get out of here. But just a way to hang out. If you're stuck at home in quarantine and tired of watching the same thing, same people say the same thing on the news all day, then, uh, you could watch me fumble around with an aircraft and have some fun with some friends. Yeah, man, Rich makes some awesome videos. Just the information, like, if there's one person who named his channel exactly what it is, RC Informer is, uh, is a good one. You know, he gets into all the minutia. If you've ever seen, John, <laughs> if you ever seen Rich at, at Joan Isle, sometimes it takes him about four hours to set up an aircraft before he flies. I will have flown about 56 times back and forth and watching him just little by little working on his plane. But when he flies it, it flies incredible. And Rich, I think if we do get to Joan all this year, I'm going to have to take you up and on your advice when you set up my F-18 that time. with Because uh, I think Rich doesn't use Expo at all. And he flies like on the center. He sets his everything up so fine that... Uh, you know, it's crazy. It almost, it scared me to even try it, but you know what? As long as the camera's on it, I'll do it. Let's just see. We got rates. Is there a spot that's telling me? Hmm. And again, these manual a little bit older, so I'm not seeing a spot. Oh, there it is. Elevator one, two, first hole. Rudder is second hole. Aileron is first hole. So elevator does need to be on the first hole, on the control horn. Let's make sure that's there. Turn it towards me. They're looking pretty straight to me. So I say we tighten her down. And we got those two. Sometimes things change when you tighten down that screw, but no, looking good this way. So let's just check it. All right. Unplug. Unplug. Elevator's done. So now I think the next step is going to be our big nozzles on top, the cells. Roy, I have not had one of the Freewing 64 millimeter A10. Yeah, this might have been before everybody's time. I, this, I, I wouldn't be shocked if Alpha came on. This might be older than Motion. You know, Freewing is older than Motion. They were selling aircraft before, you know, we came along and started offering our help and such and working together. So this might, it might be, it just might be. Low ceiling. So after we do so, it does elevator tail. 
I'm seeing, yep, and it tells, and in the book it does say to do what I just did, basically, because it looks like we are gluing on the main wing. No, I see screws. Oh, no, I do see screws. We're going to screw it on. So you can get access to it after. I was going to say, that would be awkward if you had to, you had to do that. But now it wants you to, it, it gives you uh, how to install the flaps if you're going to. You'd just be cutting a little foam, um, but we're not doing that today. I'm not going to worry about flaps on, on this. I don't even know if I have the extra servos to do it. I wasn't even thinking that when I went in. So let's go, oh, installing the main wing next. And then installing the engine compartment is how they put it. So main wing is next. Let's get to it. So how far can this be? And again, this was prior to like ribbon cable days. So we've got a landing gear and an aileron, a landing gear and an aileron lead. And what I'm guessing, without even saying it, they do give you a bunch of leads here. So what do they give you out of the box? We've got a triple. So a triple usually would mean nose gear steering and maybe two rudder servos is what they want out of that. And then your doubles, these are what I'm thinking we're gonna need them for. So landing gear to landing gear, aileron to aileron, do it right here in the wing first because you're never gonna be able to do it uh, once you once you put the wing on. So I'm gonna go landing gear to landing gear. This is fun, one of the, it's cool, it's sort of like going back in time because now with ribbon cables and as the technology goes, you really see the difference. It doesn't really change anything. It's just things were a little more tedious back then. But, you know, still not a build. That's why I stopped calling our videos builds. Too many people would yell at me, that's not a build. I was like, it's just a word. Just to get people, so I just started calling them assemblies because they're right. It's an assembly. Oh, and that would have been funny landing gear to aileron I, I just plugged them in the wrong way that would have been dangerous wonder what would have happened one gear comes down as the aileron turns and then I'm gonna label them too so that I know which one is which inside because I don't think you're gonna be able to see when you get there so let me take a little bright yellow gap tape, a pencil, let's put a big A on that one side, A on the other, and then we're going to wrap up, so aileron to aileron, there we go, I'm just going to tie that up there, and then not going to label the other one just because I know the other one's landing gear. So it's already labeled <clears throat> without being labeled. Okay, so now we've got <clears throat> our Y leads connected to the wing, canopies off, so I should be able to get that through. But I guess, I mean, I could, I don't think I'm going to need to pull it with a, with a go get them wire. But. Let's see. Oh, I can't wait to drop the gear on this little thing and just put it next to the Abrams. That's what I've been mostly dying to see is that it's 16 scale. All right, I'm going to use a go get them wire. Make it make this a little easier for me. I got too much going on in here lately. This will just guarantee success of getting it to where you want it to go. Go get them. Go get them. Here we go. And that looks like snug fit. Make sure. Nice. 
Man, that ain't going anywhere even without a screw. That is in there nice. That's a pretty, pretty solid little bird. I dig the 64 millimeter size on an A10. Amazing what, you know, the size difference becomes from just, you know, because the twin 70 that FMS makes is infinitely bigger than a twin 64. But you would think a 64 to a 70 millimeter fan, you know, by, by name wise, why are they so much, uh, you know, different? James doing a great job, mate. You guys are motion. Oh, thanks so much, David. David Cleland. Um, you know, don't don't thank me, man. That's just part of my job. I'm here. But uh, you know, we're all dealing with this together. But we're all hobbyists. We all love to see planes. I do, and I'm just more depressed that I was be building these for shows. I hope I could get back out to shows and actually fly these things and hang with people rather than talk about them online. You know. I have no interest in being YouTube famous. Not, not why I do this. Just sort of has to be done. All right, so I'm going to turn upside down. I'm going to drive in. Now, at this point, at this stage, you have six of the eight screws left, and it's only two screws because you had that big, that big forward foam piece that, that tucked in there, so it's just two screws together. So that's that. And then these must be for the engine pods. So where's my screwdriver? There it is. So we'll screw these down. Like not. Very funny. Can't even lie. That one of my all-time favorite videos, Reckham. Oh, this is, I think this is the plane that Frank stomped on. That's so funny. That might be the best. That might be the best. RC plane video. I downloaded that off of, off of Facebook and just saved it for my own, just in case it ever disappears. I could not, it's one of those that I want to have forever. So I made sure to download that. I got it. If you guys haven't seen that, Frank, I don't know who Frank is. If Frank was out there, I'm sure his CG was just terribly wrong and he didn't set up his plane right or he did it completely on purpose uh, just to make that video. Either way, it was one of a kind. He just steps all over it. It's terrible. No, it was and it wasn't in bad shape at all. He could have easily fixed it. But I think part of us have have been there with certain things. I don't know if I ever got there with an RC plane yet, but Oh, TCAT, it's it's you got to type in fr Frank. Somebody could Somebody's got to find it. Just him and his wife. His wife is filming. It looks like they're in Vegas, maybe, like, or somewhere. Like, they're at a, they're at a terror, like, an abandoned runway. And he takes off this, and it's just, it's in the air, and it's just like this the whole time. And he's just like, it's flying, like, and he's just yelling, 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 yelling. And he gets worse and worse. And then, you know, there was no saving it. Poor Frank. <laughs> But it's absolutely hysterical. Not safe for work, but since we're all working from home right now, a lot of people, then go get it. So now, bleep, 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 bleep. That's so funny. I'm so glad that got brought up. I forgot about that. All right, so the next one's going to be the engine. So what they call... Oh, they, wow, they got you gluing on your ordinance yet? No, I ain't doing that yet. We're going to get it set up. Ordinance is last. Installing the engine compartment. All right, for the engine compartment, they're giving us two plastic pieces that you'd recognize from flight line birds or other, other foamies. So that's going to help you hold in your screws. We got four screws left. So those are only the last two things we got to screw in. And then inside this compartment is just our engine leads. So, motor leads, sorry, motor leads. So what I want to do actually, I think before I install this, can I do it? Yeah, I might as well do it. I think I'm going to bind it up first because when I plug in the motor wires, I want to make sure they're both going in the right direction before, uh, before I lock it down. It would make no sense to plug it in now just to have to take it off. And... Just so anybody who, if you don't know, on your motor leads, if your motor's ever going in the wrong direction, on any motor, you got the three, the yellow, black, and red, you just got to switch any two. So if you're like me, um, every time I have to plug these in, I always 
I always plug them in wrong and have to switch them over. No matter what I do, I always plug them in wrong. I just wish, I don't know why they don't just most, I think the AL37 is the first one that did where they make these red, yellow, and you know, the same colors. For some reason they don't, a lot of back in the day, it's like nobody thought to just, just put a little yellow tape on it. That would make, make life so much easier if we're gonna have to do this, so. It'd be great. Hey, inertia. No, nobody likes a tail heavy plane. We all find out the hard way that we don't like tail heavy planes. Never rush your build, but I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> Inertia's got me for my doctor mask. He's he's a funny dude. I gotta meet this this man again. Were you making a midget joke, Kenny? GB Linden, GB, you're going live tonight, right? What do you got going on? Oh, Ken just saw Frank's video. Does how many vi does Frank's video have a million views? I'd be surprised if that didn't actually go viral just in the general sense because of how crazy it was. Maybe it would have to be cut down to like 30 seconds. Your average person probably will have no idea why he got so mad at this. All right, before I bind it up, last thing they give you is um, uh, a triple, I guess not a Y lead that you call it, but a triple extension. So I assume I want to find my two rudder cables, which should, two rudder wires, and I have my landing gear, um, my landing gear lead. I may need another, another lead. Throttles wired through. Where is it? Elevator. Well, there it is. Rudder. Oh, the rudder's already wide to the steering. It's in the landing gear's wide to the steering. So then I guess I use it for my landing gear? Uh, but then that would be weird. Well, I guess. Then they should have gave me... So they gave me one triple. I mean, I guess I can use it. Then I got an open... Then I got an open port because I already wide my two. I wide the mains together. I could have just, I could have put these two and triple because I don't want to do a Y to a triple. So they just give me an extra Y lead. The rudders were already on this side, are already wide together. One rudder is a big Y to those two, and then one to the nose steering servo. My ailerons you saw me do, and. Uh, elevator yeah all right so I'm gonna take the well I'm gonna take the wing off and just make sure I do it that way so I'm gonna put my lead and this is why we update manuals over time but might as well get back in here so I'm gonna switch this out quick not that hard to do just one of those things where you're like darn it Ah, they gave me one for the flap option. You're right. So one of the Y's. So they gave me two Y's and I guess a W. So you want to use the three for the landing gear instead and save save the other one for the flaps. I'm forgetting that. So for the flaps, they're giving you everything but the servos you would need to do the flaps. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's just do this quick. We'll do this again. Do it right the first time. Send an aileron to aileron. Well, I labeled my aileron. I didn't label the landing gear because I labeled the other one. Ah, so there we go. Now we're going to use this guy and we'll be able to. So your rudder and your landing gear uh, and your nose steering servo are all ready, ready to go. So we're doing this to this. Nice, and where did I put that go get them wire? Did I toss it? I did chuck it. So we're gonna go get them again, just to make sure. Frank, no! 
That's unbelievable. Now I want to. I wish I could play it on here, but it's not safe for work for sure. Even though I'm sure everybody in my company saw it, and everybody in the hobby probably saw Frank. Do you think he's still in the? Do you think he's still in the? In the hobby? Or do you have to just like, if you're gonna make a video like that, you gotta just bow out and say, that's it. That's how I, that's how I depart. Nothing's gonna be better than that. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than this. Like if you're out there flying something else, then you're a... two screws that I did. Is that what I just did? Is that what I heard fall? One. Oh, you mother. We're going to have to find that other screw. And I had the screws in the wings. One might have went out. I found one. I found one while I hunt for screws. All right. I have a bunch of extra stuff, so we'll put one in there to hold it for now. And Alex, remind me if I found that extra screw for when it is time to go. Then rather my engines have it. But, all right, so now we've got her where we want her. You can see just a little more time with something like this. And now I want to get her bound up. So I've got fine plugs from yesterday. Has a screw loose. I dropped a screw, man. Only human that's on the floor somewhere. Or the worst part is I have boxes on the ground here. I thought I heard something, but I wasn't paying attention to what it might be. And now, oh, there it is. Hey, good eye. Five screws left. We'll put him back on a little later. All right, so I got my bind plug in my six channel. We're going throttle. We got the aileron. We got the elevator already marked nicely. We got, oh, and we want to Y up our gear. So this is rudder. And then don't forget that I want to Y up my, my gear here. That's what I should have did. I gotta find the part of that W that doesn't have. We can connect it to the. Where is it? Come on, baby. Just can't get my finger. I've got it. Just a matter of finding that extra lead to plug into the to the front landing gear. And ah, the power of it. Is Boozer here? What's up? Always wanted to try this one. So did I, man. So did I. I have to get into it again. You know what I'm gonna do? That's what we're gonna do. Hold on. I'm gonna tape this thing up so it doesn't move around on me. Sorry, we gotta do a quick fix here. So this is my landing gear that that line, but I can't find the which one is my empty slot. I think it might be caught. Maybe I maybe I got it in. I don't know. That one is loose. That one says loose. There it is. Come on, come on. It just got caught. Hey, we found it. So now we're going to plug that in to our nose gear. 
So now all the main gear are plugged in. So gear goes into my next, my last channel. Since I don't have flaps installed, that's it. Everything is plugged in. And now we'll figure out a way. Now if I was gonna mount it, because the battery's gonna be deep in there. And based on where it's going, it looks like the best place to actually mount this might be just, probably just gonna be on the wall next to it. Or if I could get it, I could just get it all the way up front to this. Let me make a shelf. We'll figure that out a little later. But let's get her bound up, shall we? So we got a 3000 ready to go. We got our transmitter. And I don't have a model set up. So we're just going to do... What could I copy over? You know what? Should I just copy the big A10? It's something without flaps. And we'll just make a new one. Add new model. Create new model. I should have did this before. Building a throttle servo tray. Just glued my finger to the tray. Kicker works. Oh, kicker works. For sure. Nothing feels quite like a little kicker on the fingertips to wake you up. Model name, A, sorry, can't go in there without these names, I'm just going to name it like A10 Baby or something, A10, you know what, A10-6, we'll call it a day, A10-6, aircraft type is actually normal, dual aileron, dual, one aileron, one flap. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna put one aileron on one flap in case I come back and do flaps at some point. No gyro. Channel sign. And back out. There we go. So now we're gonna have to reverse channels because I didn't have a model to copy over like the other days. So I'm going to have to do some of that, but let's plug her in. We have no motors, so are we going to get, RESCs probably won't arm. Is it going to bind? I don't even know. Do I have to have the motor bind. plugged in? I'm not hearing anything. Nope. We got a bind. We're good. Whoa, look at those throws. So this is obviously, I didn't do anything. Elevator is already reversed. Ailerons are reversed. Rudder is right. And let's make sure I didn't pull out my gear. Nice. So we got some gear. And let's see. There we go. Small little wheel. I don't know if this is going to be a crap. This is definitely not. Not going to be grass capable, but we got to feel the power. I think I might be able to chuck this bad boy. So, you know, tomorrow when we go to fly, we're going to be at a grass field. So I don't know if I'm going to bother bringing it tomorrow. This will be perfect for the CCRC, though, uh, to go around. But now I want to check. We got to do our motor direction and get those nozzles attached, nacelles attached. I'm saving for that, zombies. Any uh, questions at this point? Nope. We're going through and it's one o'clock. It'd be funny if this takes me longer than than a big tiger cat and and a bayhawk. Probably will just gluing on all the ordnance and such. So oh, they couldn't give you any smaller wires. So we're gonna be right here when it's all said and done. So I'm gonna do I guess I gotta do one at a time. So let's see, how are we going to do this without hurting it? That's always the toughest part about something like this. And how do you do it to show it on camera? But let's plug one. One thing I like about EDFs though, less risk of snipping a finger off or something. Let's do one at a time. So let's see. Oh, 
no matter what I do. I told you, I can't, I'll never, I'll never plug them in the right way the first time. I'll just, never, never. So now I'm going to reverse any two. So I'm pulling out the red one and the black one. Put the black one where the red one was. Red one where the black one was. power and it's definitely going the right way because it wanted to nail me in the face so now let's do this side and I will 100% get this side wrong as well that's just me but let's see all right now this side I'm gonna keep my fingers right there for a sec Un unbelievable no no chance no like you only have one shot and again unplug this side the wrong way that's incredible so unplugging the red <clears throat> unplugging the black plugging the black where the red was plugging the red where the black was and let's check it again got some power. 4S is nice. So let's lay that down there. Let's, let's seal her up. Okay. So real quick, I'm going to unplug just so I don't accidentally hit something. Again, with any twin motors, uh, and any motor, but you know, definitely going to do a calibration on the ESCs. Make sure those are going together. But that uh, that seems some power. And yeah, we'll dial the throws down and everything, of course. But you know, I just I just set up a brand new model, so it was more about just binding it up and checking everything first because I had to check that motor direction. So this one, so the, there's bigger one and a smaller one. If you guys see. So the bigger one goes on the front, the larger fits down there nice, and then the back one, screw housing, if you will, and we got four screws for this, where's my screwdriver? What a mean such a mean looking aircraft, the A-10. It just looks mean. It just looks like it wants to hate everybody in sight. I just love the idea of, we got this huge gun. Let's build something around it to make it fly. I want to fly this huge gun. <laughs> okay, sir. Here's how we're going to do it. couldn't imagine if seeing one of these oh there's alpha he has made it good morning sir people have been watching me fumble around with this a10 if you have any questions father alpha with them there we go just make sure yeah Put it on there. Yeah, this one we're gonna have to try to weather. I'm thinking tomorrow I'm gonna bust out the Benchcraft, uh, the Benchcraft airbrush set, and we'll just do. We'll have some fun with this one because it's small on the table. I'll maybe set the camera up on the table, looking down on it. I haven't even switched cameras today. But trying again. Maybe I'll or I'll put the camera a little further back and I'll stand on the other side. But. Just do some of the panel lines, nothing crazy. Around the end, but let's see. Yep, yeah, on there tight now. I'm just gonna slide this 
I'm just gonna slide this in real quick. I just wanna see something while I have it. Now, virtually completed, move that back. What am I hitting? Oh, I'm hitting the battery lead. There it is, get that out of there. There it is. And now I just have to see. Whoa. They should be 16th scale to the max. How cool is that? <laughs> Select the date for the next batch of tanks, Alpha. I need more. On the, should be on the way, Mary Boozer. Fighter Pilot Podcast. It is so awesome. Did Alex clue you onto that yesterday? We listened to the SR-71 on the way to Null in the fall last year. So that is scale to each other, guys. If you're a tank guy and you just want uh, that. Can you CG the plane before the ordinance? Sure, it's just a matter. I don't have the recommended pack, but Jeremy was saying the larger pack is what you want to go. So Alpha, what do you think? Would a 4,000 matter on this thing? Or... <laughs> it's not as fun watching Frank. If if I could hire Frank to do this, I would love I would love that. Frank could just get mad and smash everything on the table. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my G Abrams over here. Put down this. So CG. If it's like any other A10, I'm assuming that red dot that they put on there is gonna be pretty much my CG mark. They're saying 55. 50 to 55 millimeters from the leading edge. So let's check it. Let's check it. Metric. So you know what? I'll give you the top down view. You people want to see that. So fade. Let's move this into here. So you see the red dot. I'm going to put my finger on when it lays on the back. So. Bang. So 55 is right at the front. There's a there's like a panel line that red dot is in. That's 55, that's 50. So it's a little, you know, you don't want to go by stickers on a model because, you know, my stickers could be placed a little differently than your stickers. But but we're about right here. So I'm within the red sticker. So I just put a little pencil on there. Right on the front there's a there's another square I don't know if that's part of the sticker or if that's molded in oh it's molded in so there's a square molded in on both sides of the wing here that uh, they put the the sticker on top of so you're right at the front line of the square is 55 so that's my mark so we'll come back to main cam how bad is it to install the flaps? Well, I haven't done it, but I don't think it's going to be bad at all. It just involves uh, Mojo. It just involves they give you the wide lead, they give you the control horns, and they give you they give you the control horns and the control rods to do it. The pockets are already there, so you've got the pockets already there, and it would just be a matter of slicing. Uh, Slicing the foam in these lines, you want to keep this one because one servo is going to be acting for both, you know, inboard, outboard. And uh, maybe cutting a little bit off here because then this is going to be your foam hinge. There'll be a foam hinge inside. So you would just have to do a little bit of work on the, uh, you know, on the foam, but nothing that would be too hard. They have everything molded in. Your control horn would go right here servo you got the trough already so you can run it you could run the wire right through right in and uh catch it on the other side it should be shouldn't be hard at all if i had the servos right now here i would i would try to do that for you but you know 64 millimeter bird i think we're gonna have fun just just flying it as is um all right let's uh so cg still working on the cg so let's see I just want to mount, I don't know where I'm going to mount my, my, uh, there you go. So right now I have a 3,000 in there. Let's go with a 4,000. 
Let's see if a 4,000 even fits. And yes, it will. Oh, it most certainly will. So you can have that. Now I'm just going to test, see what I'm getting by just dropping it in on the tray. And we'll see where that goes. Got to get a starting point. You just got to watch out the battery leads. Touch, move that. Let's see. Oh, I want to come up. I want to come up. So I want to put my receiver probably farther back and put the battery. I want the battery more forward. Seems to me, based on that. Let's see, where is my. Oh, there's my Velcro. Get my Velcro out there. Now we can really tape it down. So I'm just going to put it in and put the battery all the way up against the shelf here and see what happens. It's a better starting point, I guess, if you will. Let's see. This is a 4000 too. This is a heavier than the re this will be heavier than the recommended pack. Grab that velcro strap. Mm. There we go. There we go. I'll have to mount the receiver. Now we got to find Best mounting spot. All right, so we put that there. We'll push this for the time being. Hmm. Be a tough. I might have to get servo extension or something just to put my receiver somewhere. But or I'm gonna mount the receiver backwards in the future. I may take the wing off to mount the receiver. As odd as that sounds, mount the receiver further back if I got to be this far forward with my battery. But all the little fun things. All right, so now the battery, the 4000 all the way forward. This is without ordinance, not that. There you go. So that's at 55 millimeters and she's holding she's holding strong so if you want to see that's a 4000 i am as far forward as i can get it in the uh in the hatch guys so that's probably where i'm gonna start it off that day and obviously my receiver is not going to be jammed at the top there where it's going to be. We're going to we're going to get that in there right when we do it. But tomorrow will not be the the day for flying this one yet. But I will finish that off. Oh, take out my bind plug so that doesn't kill me later. And she is a tail sitter without the battery in, as all A10s usually are with those big engines in the back. I'm just going to lay this one in there for now. And I guess we could do the we could do the ordnance if we want, but the ordnance is all glue, center tank is all glue. So it's a matter of if you're going to do it, you're doing it once and you're doing it forever or you would just get some magnets to do it. You know, for this one since it's cool as, you know, it's cool, I'll definitely glue all the ordnance in, but you'll just use the foam tack. We got all the antenna bits, the same little pieces you'd expect. You know, this guy's probably gonna go here. All your verts, I mean, all the silly stuff. And I guess we can look like James, push it back and show Frank how it's done. Oh man, <laughs> that would be so funny. If Alpha would let me just crash it on purpose, why not? Do it a big one. Show Frank how it's done. Oh goodness, Frank, no! <laughs> Let 
Let us know here the best places to step on that plane. <laughs> well, I do like right in between the, the motors is perfect. But I think she's cool, man. I think I dig her because, like I said, she's 16 scale. And I've been so... I'm becoming more and more of a tank guy. So just being able to do this already has me excited. And when the B-24 is up with the... With there, I mean, check that out. How does that not look cool? You know, if you're on the other side, if you're on the other side of this, you've got a problem. <laughs> you've got a big, big problem on your hands. You're gonna have to be, you know, this is like, you know, let's put it this way. We put this here. You're in check. It's your move. How do you? How are you going to? Uh, how are you going to handle this at this point? Because if one doesn't get you, the other one will. But looking really cool. And now I'm going to have to get ready rest of the day. Yeah, we need the low shot of this. You're right, Alex. We will get it as soon as the world comes back to normal. We will get going with that. And I got to do the B-24 and the Sherman with the King Tiger. Like, so much we want to do. Just... Open up the field, man. Are the A-10 and Abrams the same scale? Yes. I looked at the wingspan, 1100 millimeter wingspan on an A-10 based on its real size is pretty is is exactly the same scale. This is the only other 16th scale bird I think we got other than the B-24. So it's funny, the flight line, 2000 millimeter B-24. Think about how, you know, big the B-24 is if you saw it compared to this. So like our A-10 is way too big, the big version, but perfect scale for these guys and actually looking at it it's funny that they are the same scale but the that means the guy that probably well the sherman guy that would come with him he's definitely got a smaller head than that so the figures themselves probably aren't scale you know maybe he's maybe he's a little too big in the cockpit i think uh the pilot inside so like somebody i think somebody said you um you move the tanks every vid. Yeah, man, I'm, I use the tanks. The tanks are too much fun. The tanks are too much fun. And find a GI Joe, or better yet, 3D printed pilot bus. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what you have to do. You're right. His head is way too big, in here for what, compared to the other guy. Because I think the Sherman dude is is scale. The guy that I have in that one. But it's mean. So tomorrow we'll, so I'll have to look at some weather pictures. So I'm thinking tomorrow, and again, since uh, Alex and I are going out to fly during the day, tomorrow's show, guys, will not be at noon. Um, we're just going to be out doing some stuff. So uh, as soon as I get back, will be a matter of, you know, he's going to run off with, with the footage we get, and then I'll get set up, and I'll, an hour before I go live, I'll make posts. So, you know, I don't, I'm not going to go too late. I don't want to cut into anybody's regular time. My hope would be probably about 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time would is the time I'm hoping to do it. Because the goal with Alex is to get to this field tomorrow at 9 a.m., uh, you know, fly around till about noon and try to hit the road, but it's an hour each way. So I'll be out the door. So right after I shut this live feed off, I'm going to start charging up, getting ready, getting the camera set up, and uh, go. But the free wing 64 millimeter A10s, first time I ever really got up close to it. I've seen it fly, and she flies great. I mean, if you're a 4S guy, obviously there's a 6S one now. If you got 6S packs, awesome. But if you got 4S packs, you got you saw me plug it in, and I fired it up. She definitely goes. You got 12 bladed fans inside. You know, there's definitely upgrades to it. Um, you know, since when it came out, and it looks good. All the panel lines are there. Easy to weather if you're into weathering. You know, smaller size to display and get into your car, obviously, for transport. And if you got yourself an Abrams, you got yourself an A10. So it looks looks really, really cool. But guys, it's 124. I'll definitely hang out for a little while. James, what plane are we unboxing next? So tomorrow, like I said, I make tomorrow, I think, instead of unboxing a plane, um, I'm thinking about just maybe getting out the airbrush and hitting up and hitting up this plane with the airbrush and some detailing you know why not why not see if we can bring out some of that uh you know some of that extra extra look to her because she's a cool looking 
She's a cool looking one, and since, uh, you know, it is what it is, a little basic, might as well dirty her up. You know, you can't have an A10 looking too clean. Why not? 64 millimeter inertia. I didn't sound, yeah, I mean, you know, it's smaller, but 12 blade in there, so it sounds better than it did. Let's put it that way, you know? But uh, you're not buying a 60, I'm not buying a 64 for the sound. Honestly, it's so funny. Other than the Venom, Venom's the only one that I hear the sound that I care about. I'm not a sound person. I know a lot of people on there who, you know, oh, it doesn't sound that way. Sound, I don't, none of these sound like a real turbine to like a real jet. I don't care how many blades you put on the fan. They're EDFs. They're all hair dryers. Like, I don't fly them for the sound. I think it's funny that people put so much, but, it, it, but everybody's got things they like and things they don't like. But uh, it's really funny. You know, that's when the sound comes up a lot, you know, put a sound card in it, I guess. But, you know, none of these sound real <laughs> when, you know, go to a, go to an air show, listen to the A-10 start up and you'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, like nothing's going to sound like that. But a lot of people like the whoosh to me. It's just like the speed. I like the, the pattern of it. Like when I fly, just, you know, like riding a roller coaster is how I sort of view it. Now I got the T90 Russian battle tank. You know, they're like a battle tank. Put boot, boot to ASS. Yup. I don't know if I could say that on here. We'll get, we'll get flagged. That's not what we're about. Yeah, I mean, the Venom is one where I hear it. And yeah, you know, it's, it's there. It's, it's just not at the top of my list is what I should say. You know, I'm not going to knock the sound, but you know, it is, it's, it's nice to hear a good sound, but it's not my first, it probably wouldn't be in my top five reasons of getting a jet or liking it. Will have flown to 90 in your vid, you comment on the sound. Yes, for the people who like the sound, of course. I mean, I, I hear it, obviously, and the sound's great, you know, but again, you're trying to, there's so many different variations, but for me personally, it wouldn't be like a reason I would buy a plane over another one is this one sounds better than the other one. You know, like the one thing, especially like the nine blade versus the 12 blade, you know, I see that a lot with the Avantis and uh, the L39s went out there. Like when I fly them both, I can't tell the difference. You know, they both sound good to me, um, you know, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to be annoyed one way or the other if I have one or the not, you know, or not the other one, you know. Because at this point, um, yeah, you know, it's just they're all so same. Is this a good first jet? Uh, I I can't attest to that yet. I haven't flown it yet. I would think maybe, you know, it, maybe A10s are okay. I, I You got landing gear. It's good to practice, something you practice with. It's a straight wing EDF, but, you know, I still think you'd want to go with like a Rebel or an Avanti, you know, before you ever go to this, because sometimes the smaller planes actually can give you a bad idea of RC, because smaller planes can be squirrely, or, or, you know, like this thing's gonna get knocked around in the wind, so if you're not out there on the perfect day, it might be different, so, you know. Airbrush a footprint, please. I don't know if I'm that good. 3D print some EDF whistles for this. You know, I never, I saw Mike did the whistle, I never, I never saw a plane with the whistles in there, and I guess you embed them inside here, right? I don't know if there's enough thickness on the foam for this part. I know with the with the Freewing A10, uh, he did it. <laughs> when I crashed it, it sounded awfully good. <laughs> Rudder needs to be set correct. Why is only the right wheel well tip painted black? Uh... You know what? That is an alpha question. I have no clue why that would be the case, but I believe it's the same on the larger one. I believe it's a scale, a scale thing. How does the crunch of the foam sound? Well, nothing sounds better to me when you crash than hitting a bunch of tree branches when you're not expecting it, you know? Ah, uh, no. Is alpha there? Alpha had mentioned that after we did the March Madness. Um, possibility coming up, guys, for another competition will be a paint scheme on an existing plane. I don't know what plane it would be yet, but um, a plane everybody knows and loves might be coming with a new livery in the future, and they might put it out there to the people to uh, 
design it. And if you get in the competition, I believe the way we'd have it work is if your design ends up being chosen or is the design that inspires the final design, because the livery is about the last thing you can change. You know, you could you could change that almost any time um, in the process of making the plane. Uh, then you get one. You'd be one of the first people to get one, and you'd be you'd be announcing it probably with us. You know, you'd be you'd be be able to have be one of the first people who've flown it and got pictures of it along with with Alex and I, and anyone else in the, our customer service department who would get one to do it. So. And again, you don't have to be perfect. You can you could paint. You know, when we do this, um, we'll give you the way it would probably work. Is Alpha will probably have blank, uh, top down view, bottom view, side views. You know that we'd send out. You download them. You could use a crayon or you know print them out and then just take pictures of it. Uh, you could Microsoft Paint like Photoshop. It doesn't have to be perfect. It would be the type of thing. Um, you know, we're just an an idea. You know, the better obviously the better you can be, the better. But Maybe your just your color scheme is what ends up being the inspiration for from for it, you know. But uh, hopefully Alpha's still here. If he's not, if he left already, but uh, he'll get to it. Hopefully we can do it. I'm not sure when though. But the idea too is another 64 millimeter, um, 64 bracket tournament coming before next March. Like that was so much fun to do this year. We definitely want to do it again. It's just a matter of, you know, what can we do to make it different this time. James, when you crash into trees, you gotta hit hard fast, especially in our field. If you hit them hard enough, they echo and the whole tree line shakes. It it hundred percent is. I'll tell you a funny story. So back at my past previous job, if you guys remember the Excalibur, the uh, the, the Durafly uh, Excalibur, I had taken it to Neat. Neat Fair is a fantastic show up in the valley and uh, of upstate New York with a good friend, Tom Hunt, was there. And we had the only one. We had just announced the plane. And at that point, I was feeling really confident. I'd been flying tons around. I'd flown the Excalibur a bunch, loving that model. And I flew it out. One of the first days I was there, I flew it up into the sun. Figured it was going to come out of the sun in the direction I wanted. As I was coming down, the plane went the I pulled, thinking I was pulling up. The plane went backwards the other way. I turned the other way at full speed. The thing's like a warm liner. Right through a bunch of trees. It echoed through the entire valley. <laughs> and in front of everyone. And it was the only one we had of that plane. And man. It is. Uh, that was that was an unbelievable sight. I had cameras on it and everything. And it ended up in a tree limb. In a bunch of pieces. But hanging over a lake. Like the tree was out over the lake and I managed to go in and get a run cam that I found one run cam from it, but the rest of it was gone. Terrible. So Alpha, you're there. Alpha, if you're listening, um, any information that you can uh, tell anyone about possibly the paint contest that uh, you were thinking of painting the plane that we announced, you know, we kind of said that when we were before we did the March Madness tournament. Mm -mm. As far as North Georgia, you know, I asked the club president if it would be okay if I was out there. So I got the approval to head out, but I'm tempted. I'm probably going to end up joining the club just as an extra because it does have more space than CCRC, so it'll be perfect for. Uh, the big zero, a lot of the bigger models we got, and also just a second place to go with just a different view. And they are an all all grass runway anyway, so it'll be a completely different experience than what you see at CCRC. So, um, you know, we should have some fun there. I'm excited to see it, but it is a little bit of a hike, so we're gonna hit the road probably about 7:30 in the morning, get there and go. And then try to be out of there as fast as possible as well. So Alpha's not answering us about, about that contest. But I'm just reading the comments, guys. And again, hanging out. So I hope everybody's having a good time today as well. And as I said, tomorrow, probably going to be going live around 3, 4 p.m., depending on when we get there. And... If you guys, I mean, I'll put it out there. Would you rather see me fumble around with an airbrush on this A10 
or would you rather me unbox? I've got the high performance 64 F18 back there, and I have a Camelwell 39. But I feel like we've seen them all around, so you know. David yourself channels. Are you a member up there? Is that where you're going? If you're gonna be there, man, we'll we'll be there. You know, you better I'll meet you, but keep your social distance. <laughs> we could stand, you know, twelve feet apart or something and just and just wave at each other. But no, I'll be happy to meet you. You can watch me fumble around, but then you gotta be super, super silent. But do you really wanna meet James? Hey, I know. It's funny, I, I the only place I ever get recognized is at an RC field occasionally. Um, but I've never been recognized by anyone in person anywhere other than at a hobby shop once. So even other times you walk in like, I am not famous by any means. But it is funny, sometimes you go to show and people are like, oh, I watch you all the time. And it's just like, it's, it's weird because I don't know. I never think of it like that. I'm just building planes and filming them. Oh, Alpha saying, guys, 120 people in the chat and only 40 likes. So if you've been liking what we're doing, like, put, throw a like on the video, please. Maybe share it out, you know, because again, I may, we may continue this until the quarantine ends. I'm not sure. This was sort of an experiment. I've been enjoying this. It's the third straight show you know, every week. It's been exciting to know to do it. Um, and maybe we'll do it next week, too. So it's, uh... You know, maybe something that continues for a little while because we're all sort of stuck in the same boat. So many people out there can't fly, but it's great to talk about RC. It's great to do it live. Great to be in the same spot with a bunch of people, like-minded people, you know. So um, we're excited. Mojo. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's so much of a review as it is a build, but we'll see. Let's see if I bring it home in one piece and then I could properly let you know if it's a review or not. But if it flies even remotely... I mean, I, I have no fear of it or if that's if that's the thing. I, I think if you've flown anything, it's just a matter of if you like an A10 and you want a smaller version rather than the big one, here's a you know, here's a good option. If you have a lot of 4S batteries, here's a good option. Um, if you got an Abrams and you just want them to sit there like this together, there's a good option. You know, it's awesome. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. We need an A10 FPV gun run on the T72. Oh yeah. And here's my, so this was the, you guys have seen it before, but I, I've weathered this one up. Oh my goodness, I would have to put, I'm gonna have to take the soldering gun, doof, 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 across the whole top of the T72. That would be perfect. Let's get rid of the Abrams then. Wow, the Abrams, bigger, bigger and better. Boom. Let's put him in the back. But yeah, I weathered that up and colored him up. He's so much darker and all different colors on. He was fun to do. I like it. FPV A10 at the beach. Yeah, you guys are always chasing the, the A10. Ooh, I'm getting tired. Too many live shows. It's a bit fast for its size. The 80 millimeter flies larger. Probably, yeah, that's one thing, you know, like I, I wouldn't, I don't buy an A10 for speed, you know, like if you want speed, you're going Mirage, F5, you know, there's so many other planes you would go for speed. I think a10 in a way is you know maneuverable fun and then or you could be like eduardo veloce and rolling circle it around the electric line at joan all you know yeah pearl jam i mean bigger's always better on that but i've seen a couple big balsa ones too look gorgeous sleepers for the week i know i shouldn't have shown my weakness here i was up a little late i was finishing that Flightline Tiger Hunt, and I joined up with Jeff Custom RC and uh, and Dustin Hallman. They do their flight club, and we had some. They were having some fun last night. The two of them, they're crazy. So I was up with them while I was finishing up the Tiger Cat that we did yesterday. I was putting all the decals on it. 
finishing it up. So, uh, you know, stayed up a little later than usual last night. And now I'm making myself yawn again. Mm -mm -mm. Shadow, Shadow, Admiral. Who said Admiral 3600? The biggest it can fit? On this plane, I just fit... No, Shadow. I mean, Shadow, I just put earlier in the video, go back and refine. I put a 4000 in there before. That's what I CG'd it on. Like, it'll definitely fit. I mean, I could do it again. The battery bay is not... It's not that it's tight. It's just hard access, but that's a 3000 that I have in there, sitting there. And I didn't, I didn't mount the receiver down, but, you know, 4000. And I just put it in the... You could put it the long way, but... She'll go in there, no problem. You would mount, you know, you put it in there that way, but it fits. Four thousand, a four thousand admiral. So you have no reason to think it won't go. Now, probably when it came out on the original system, they wouldn't recommend a four thousand because I don't know. Well, a, it was a three S system, but you know, wouldn't have as much power. But now with this system, I would think I'm going to try it on the four thousand first and work my way down. As long as I don't step on it. So, but the same one from three years ago. Flight time on a 4S4000. Terry, I have no clue. I haven't flown it yet. It's the first time I've ever opened it and do it, so I'll let you know. But, uh, you know, it's probably, you know, standard jet, I would think. Probably three minutes, four if you're, maybe four in a 4000, you know, but on its usual recommended. You know, it is outrunners, not in runners. Can we see the tiger cat? <sighs> I hung it up. It's hanging there so nice behind the camera. I could bring it out. I did post a picture of it on Facebook. If you're part of our Facebook uh, community, it is there. But I put it in the, um, in the yellow scheme that it comes with. So the yellow marine scheme that's in there. You know, nothing crazy. But I already got it hanging back there and... You know, if I leave, I don't know if I want to leave. I mean, if you want me to leave, I can walk it over. But I should have, I should have put it up there instead. T forty five A four. So sorry, Evan. Evan doesn't have Facebook. You on Instagram, Evan? I could slap it up on Instagram. I would put it up here now, but I don't know if I can add it at this point. Could I add it? Let's see. While we're hanging out, it's all good. Making me do work. Making me do work. Let's see. Can I do this? So we got another. I'll hang out for another 15 minutes, guys. We've been going two hours with these things. Might as well make it even every day but if you have any more questions about this then you know let me know right now I'm not seeing the questions so save image there it is save image as let's see if I can do this quick I've never tried to do this live so it's a good test for me see how to add a video or add a picture in live while I'm just working with you. Oh, we got everybody here that's where it is. So let's see. We're on main. And I'm going to go. Let's see. So if I do this. Alex is probably like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Upload. I'm going to show the tiger cat from last night. There we go. Upload, okay. Let's see, does this, does that work? It worked. And then what happens if I do this? I just testing, and then it's gone? I think that worked. So let me toss it up again. So there you go, Evan, that was the Tiger Cat last night in all its glory. The first one I did, uh, I did the the, the hero scheme we call is the, the main scheme that you see on the uh, on the website. But then this one was a secondary. And something about navy blue with yellow is 
just bad. I like that. I liked it on the Corsair uh, that came out. I like the way yellow uh, contrasts off of, um, you know, always enjoyed that, the way it contrasts off the navy blue. So I'm excited to, to get that one back in the air, but I've flown the Cat a bunch of times, so I'm always excited about about that one. But that was fun to do last night. I just had to get it done because it was sitting here. have to get that off the table. Got to get that set away so that we can do the next one. And then now when this show's done, clean, get this all cleaned up, get it out here, get the show. I'm going to try to get the show set up today. And then we got to get everything, you know, prepared for flying session tomorrow. Batteries charged, cameras, make sure everything, make sure I don't drive an hour one way and forget my transmitter. <laughs> Because that would not be fun, and it has happened before, um, which is the worst, the worst. Because even the CCRC is a 25-minute drive for me there, so I've forgotten things and had to do an hour, take me an hour to get back there. Battery checker, Alex, yep. Well, that's usually something I just forget at the table, but I'm always at flying, and I almost do it on purpose. Wild Bill, you are late again, sir. Is we start at 12 Eastern, you know, and if you subscribe, you would get a notification a half an hour before we go live, so you can go. Motion RC's eBay store. Oh, nice, Terry. Sweet man, thank you. That's awesome. Does this have the suspension struts right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean by right, but you know, no. Not really. I mean, they are oleo. Let me see. Let me press down on her. No. They are they are faux suspension struts. You know. Again, older model, model but, you know, going to have fun. I can see that little bottle of CA that's on the bench. Way in the back. Little bottle of CA that's on the bench. Way in the back. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Oh, I got a lot of fun stuff back here. Messed up for some people, even if they are subbed. Yeah, YouTube does that a lot, all the time. Nathan Long, is the T-45 a good flyer? Yeah, T-40, the Goshawk is a trainer by nature. Um, if you want to go to Hobby Squawk for that, too, talk, see you know, YouTube. You're on YouTube now. Do a quick search for Freewing T-30-45, and boom. You will get a ton of people doing that. Uh, I, I don't know what time it opens. I was just hoping to get there at 9 a.m. and I'm going to assume it, it'll be open. If not, I'm hopping the fence. But I'll try to ask somebody that I spoke to. I spoke to the uh, president on Facebook uh, yesterday. So, you know, I hope it's there. Evan, what do I think of Atlanta Hobby? Um, the store? I don't know if I've been. Michael. Wait, what are we kidding about, Michael? Did I miss something? Little bottle C it's on the bench way in the back. Oh, okay, that was the CA on the bench. Well yeah, we got all the bench craft stuff. So I got, you know, anything we sell is pretty much back there. But I also have you know, it's always Easter eggs around too. Got to keep your eye on us. I own the T45. Yeah, a lot of people swear by the T45. The T45 also one of those models that I just, one of the few free wing ones that I haven't haven't touched yet. You know, other than the 70 millimeter Bayhawk, which, you know, similar. So I would assume, I mean, the, the BA Hawk, which I did on Monday is a fantastic flyer. That's the one I cut my teeth on. I can only imagine that a bigger version of a Goss Hawk is going to be an excellent plane and from what i've seen because i've seen them in person uh it's one of the most super scale aircraft that the uh that free wing has along with like the f-15 it's really 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 well done aircraft all around and now with the new power systems and such it's awesome garrison what's the next edf release for motion you know we can't say that why ask imagine i said it right here it's a I say I'm not even sure if I know anymore. Hobby Town isn't that far. Yeah, Hobby Town's the only place I've I, I've been as far as hobby stores around here, and 
I, you know, I don't really go into the RC section because there's nothing there for me. It's all, you know, it's all E-Flight stuff, um, as you'd expect, and a lot of car stuff. And I don't do, I don't do cars um, in that thing. So when I go to that hobby store, it's more I like going for the paints and the models. And my kids love walking around that store because they got the train set up and all the comics and superhero stuff. Uh, my father, when he comes to visit, he likes going there because my dad loves to play, like, Warhammer and things like that. That's, like, my dad. You know, one thing I got to do next time, my, my father does, uh, was a big modeler. And he has tons, thousands upon thousands of hand-painted Napoleonic Warfare figures and such that he was doing in the day. And it's, uh, it's funny. Never thought I'd be doing that stuff, too. But, hey, there you go. one of those push buttons pre-quarter answer when people ask about the next plane yeah right wrap it up have fun Bruce Lola Nocha that used to be a movie theater that hobby town in Kennesaw really it is really big I love the train they have a big they have a big scale train system in the front with about four different trains and a button that the kids can push to let the uh, let each train go it's really cool. Is the F-18 next, Evan? Uh, the 65, the 64 millimeter F-18 unboxed, but then after that, uh, and the L-39 in the box, I I will have on everything else is unboxed, so I'm, I'd run out of unboxings to do uh, live. So that's why tomorrow I'm thinking we hit up an airbrush, airbrush maybe I could do the Yag Panther a bit. We could do the A-10. I got you know some of the stuff. You know, some other stuff that I didn't have last time, like I got my cleaner, my cleaning pot. Check that bad boy out. That's on our Benchcraft, uh, you know, airbrush. So this, you stick the gun in and it cleans, you get to clean it, clean it out when you're going to change colors and such. So I was using that on the other one. We got a bunch of paints. I just have some, I'll use the Vallejo air wash in, in our, uh, in our airbrush you just drop those in I don't have to do any sort of mixing because mixing is never fun so we could do that so we just do some blacks maybe some browns and just hit it I miss what size battery this takes I was in the booth painting all cars uh, I got a 4000 sitting in there 4000 4s so we have a 3600 and then we have a uh, you know 3000 it recommends a 3300 which I didn't have so I would say probably the 4004S is about as big as you want to go. Um, you know, it's up, up there. Most releases more products than anyone else, plus continues the supply. Yeah, I mean, we're just trying to, you know, we want to become an all, you know, an all-encompassing hobby store for everybody. Something for everyone is, you know, is our goal. Not just always aircraft, but that's where it started, and we'll never forget. And we we love our aircraft, so we're always gonna have those. But we like tanks too. We're gonna like boats too. I can't wait to get one of the construction models. I've been dying to see those. James, no, I'm in Woodstock, sir. So I'm on the opposite side. How many planes in in here? <laughs> oh man well over 50 60 planes probably here because i'm taking them all the shows guys you know this is what we load up and we take with us so you know these aren't mine per se these are motion planes mm. yeah it's a dungeon it's a man it's a, a mansion dungeon what's a gold turner to the steering arm show in the t33 it's not like the others on free wing jazz mine is broke so it's grounded so just straighten it and take off. What do you need this? What do you need to steer it for? Line it up straight. That's what that's what I did with my F-18, the Silver Eagles one at Joe Nall. I had broken the steering servo and I just said the heck with it. I just put it on the grass and took off straight. <laughs> just just go for it. Why why let it ground you? Heck, you could probably I bet you could hand launch the T thirty three if you wanted to. An RC skydiver, never even heard of it. So we got five more. When is motion, motion RC gonna get into wrestling robots? As long as they make one in the shape of me, then 
then I would do it. Yes, Pandora had a broken tailwheel. It was so hard to get it off the ground. It just wanted to keep going in circles. That Joe Nall. Looks like the wheel won't lock completely. Pearl Jam, that's a better question for Hobby Squawk at the moment. I have to look. It's been a while since I looked in the wheel well of the L39 to answer your question just off the top of my head like that. You know, get on Hobby Squad, guys. You know, post pictures of your issue. I mean, our community can help you there. Or, by all means, contact customer service, man. You could call us up. You can email us. You can uh, live chat with us. And they will, you know, they'll answer your question a lot better than I can right here. Lindsay Power System Paint Schemes. They have target landing competitions there. Dr. James and the Plain Dungeon. Yeah, it'd be cool. Let's see if you're ever in the area. War drums in the background. No, that's kids stomping. Yeah, so the war drums are coming because homeschooling is crazy. My wife's a first grade teacher, so usually when I'm doing this, nobody's home. So it's very easy, but hey, this is the life we're living. So now I think it's, uh, it's probably recess at this point, so... You know, they've been dying to come down here and just interrupt while we're doing it. But maybe I'd let them. But, you know, that's why I don't post much on social media as far as families for family. And, you know, I only worry about hobby. Like, for me, Facebook is just about work. I'm only friends with people that I work with that uh, like the hobby and such. You know, all about the hobby. But we're all doing well down here. All right, guys, so I think we're going to call it up soon. We got four minutes, but, you know, I'm so excited again to do it. So as I said, I'll just reiterate, um, A, if you're still watching, 85 in here, like the video for me, please. Um, Alpha's going to get mad if you don't. Check out Hobby Squawk. You can always talk to us there, man. A uh, lot of good stuff happening there, as usual. Tomorrow... We're going out to fly, so I'll go live and I'll let everybody know through social media about an hour. But I'll make a post an hour before I go live. So it'll be impromptu. Um, and we'll probably do some airbrushing. Or if I'm feeling so, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll throw up something else. Um, then, what's it called? And then we'll definitely be live Friday, regular time, at 12 p.m. Eastern. And Friday is going to be a lot of fun. So, um,. You know, you definitely want to check out the regular show. That one will be called Episode 13, and I'm going to talk with Alpha today, uh, probably right after this video goes off, to make sure we know what that episode is going to be all about. And, uh, yeah, guys, so we'll let you know. Stay tuned to social media. I'll probably throw some pictures up of this. Uh, I'm excited to go to a new club, the North Georgia Model Aviator, see what it looks like, um, and get some flying done, and we'll let you know how it goes. So uh, that'll do it for us here, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining, and uh, we'll see you next time, guys, at Motion RC. Bye. Let's throw it up to...